Welcome incoming students to St. Mary's Area High School, a place where you will receive a very well-rounded education. We will give you information, tips, and hints to help make your first year here successful and that you will gain respect, honor, and use your potential. If you arrive to school before 7.25 a.m., you must report to the cafeteria. If you need to turn in an excuse, you can do this at this time with a faculty member on duty. At lunchtime, you will enter the cafeteria from the auditorium side. You can proceed to the lunch line. Your student ID number will still be your lunch code. You can sit anywhere. If you bring a lunch, you can use the student microwave or toaster. Down these steps, you will find the art room, band room, and chorus room. Let's talk about lockers. You will keep the same locker for four years. Your lock will either be a combination lock or a key lock. Keep your keys with you at all times. I teach the HRT Health Related Technology Program. Uh, the Health Related Technology Program is basically for anybody interested in the health field. Uh, currently we're working towards uh, a two-year program where the first year you'll take med term and anatomy and then your senior year you'll take the CNA program which is for anybody interested in becoming a nurse aide and an EMT program which is emergency medical technician or the people who drive in ambulances. So that's the goal right now. It's for anybody interested in the health field. Uh, it's a great program. It's hands-on. We have lots of labs. Uh, there's mannequins that we practice our skills on. And so it's a really good introduction for anybody interested in the health field. The main objective behind drafting class is take a three-dimensional object and move it on to a piece of paper in a two-dimensional drawing. This is used often in this area for powder metal parts when you make dyes. And it's used a lot in engineering to take an idea and put it on the paper to eventually become a product. Um, learning. I started in 10th grade. We've been learning the basic power tools, uh, how to use table saws. Um, we've built multiple things such as like cutting boards, cabinets. Um, right now we're working on making a deck for uh, our extra supplies that we have. The facilitator's office is located across from metalworking. You may visit here during study halls or advisory period for extra help with your assignments. Um, I'm in the metal shop curriculum. You use different tools like this is a zero to one uh, mic. Um, you use it for measuring different things up to tolerances to a tenth of a thousandth. Uh, this is a mill indicator for making sure your piece is indicated to what you need to do the various job on it. This is an actual synthetic diamond that is used to take off with your own wheel and a surface grinder so it's stressed up clean so it cuts but um, I learned quite a bit in metal shop from when I didn't know pretty much anything to now I'm pretty confident if I would find a job somewhere.
what to expect in your high school physical education class. Throw the word gym out the door, our class is called physical education. During your freshman and sophomore year, the girls and boys have separate classes. On the second day of class, you will each get a locker and a combination lock that must be locked on your locker every single day. If you are in a varsity sport, you will have first dibs at the big lockers. Every other day of PE class is a fitness day. During the third quarter, you will be learning how to swim. Girls must have a one-piece swimming suit or tankini, and boys must have a pair of swimming trunks. On your sport days, you will be provided skill sessions to learn how to play a variety of sports. During the end of your sophomore year, you will have the option of choosing team sports, weight training, personal fitness, or physical education, 11 through 12 for your PE credit. These classes will be co-ed. Here's the nurse's office. While we are here, let's get some helpful hints and tips. Each year, parents must complete this form. This form allows the nurse to administer aid if your student feels sick. It asks questions on current health conditions and current medications. It also asks for permission to administer things like Tums or ibuprofen. If your child is on an, any current medications that must be given during school, you need to fill out the medication form. You can then return the form and medicine in its original container to the front office. This must be done by a parent. Even though 11th grade is some time away, we would like to remind you that you need a physical that year. It is required by the School Health Act. Physicals for sports or driver's license meet the PA requirement. If your child has any allergies or asthma, you should fill the required care plan form out and return it to the nurse. If the student has an inhaler or EpiPen, they may be permitted to, to be carried by the student as long as a doctor's order and parent permission are, file are on file with the nurse. Each year, your child is given a vision screening during their physical education class. Grade 11, they will be given a hearing screening. If you have a gym excuse, they should be turned into the front office. The office will give copies to the nurse and your student teachers. Parent gym excuses are usually not accepted. It needs to be a doctor's excuse. Please communicate any health-related issues or concerns that arise throughout the school year directly to the nurse. Julie Chicola, 814-781-781. 2130 or at her email at juliejacola at smsd.org. Physical is required at the beginning of the school year for any participation in a sport. If you choose to participate in fall, winter, spring, whenever you decide to start, you have to have a physical. If you've already had a physical, then you need to get a recert, depending on whether you have been injured or not. If you've not been injured, then a Section 7 recertification by a parent is required. If you have been injured, then Section 8 by a physician is required to start the next sport. If you get a concussion, you have to go through the concussion pro protocol with Ashley, okay, he the trainer, um, to, and then a doctor research to start the sport. Hi, I'm Molly Whaler, I'm one of the counselors here at the high school. And I'm Shelby Benjamin, I'm the other counselor. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we do in our offices and some of the services that you can receive from us. First thing that we do mainly is counseling. We're the counselors. Um, we can cover anything from academic counseling to social issues, personal issues, um, crisis intervention, pretty much anything that you would need. You can come and see either one of us for that. One of the main vehicles that we use to get services for students is the Student Assistance Program. And through that, we help to try to alleviate anything that's considered a barrier to learning. And that could be ranged from a wide number of things to just a few sessions of supportive counseling for a student or for students to be able to participate in our programs such as HOPE, which is an outpatient counseling uh, program that occurs here within our building so that you're not running to a clinic or going to the office. You can get all of those services right here. We also try to connect students with um, things that happen off-site, such as Crossroads or the Educational Intensive Outpatient Program. 
uh, some students in our building meet with representatives from CAPSI, from drug and alcohol, from anything ranging from counseling to just education. We also have a Project Rapport, which deals with teen pregnancy. And so there are a lot of resources out there that we can connect you with, so don't ever be afraid to come down and see one of us and ask for those services. Some of the other areas that we deal with um, regarding academics are cor the course selection process that each student does every year during the spring. We meet with every student, 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, um, to schedule their courses for the following school year. Uh, some of the curriculum areas that we offer for students that they can choose going into their 11th grade year are college prep, job readiness, metalworking, building construction, health related technologies, and then as a senior they could also choose our diversified occupations. We go more in depth in explaining these areas when we meet with 10th grade students who are scheduling for their 11th grade year. Um, the scheduling process is done online, so um, myself and Mrs. Whaler meet with the students in the library to select their courses online. We help the guide through the process, helping them select electives and helping them figure out you know, what they want to do after high school. We also have our program of studies, which is available online, which can help students understand what kind of courses we offer here and which electives that they want to take. The other area that we work in is the schedule change process. Um, once the school year begins, students have 15 days to make any changes to their schedule that they wish. There are certain guidelines that has to be followed for schedule changes, but basically we have a blue sheet that they can receive from their advisory period teachers or in our guidance office that they can fill out and we will look at those and meet with the student individually to discuss their schedule change. Another topic that we cover with students is standardized testing and that can range from things in ninth grade all the way through 12th grade. The main area of standardized testing deals with taking the SATs, the ACTs that uh, help prepare students uh, for admission to college. In 10th grade and 11th grade, students have a chance to take the PSAT, which is a practice version of the real SAT. It's a much cheaper version. It usually runs below $15 for the students to take it. They get a great score report and then also access to remediation type of services through Khan Academy. Uh, the other type of standardized testing that we offer are the ASVABs, which are the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. They are run through the military, but they give students really good information as far as career counseling and some type of direction for their career. So all juniors do take that. And we also, uh, through our school, offer AP tests to students that take courses that qualify for them to be able to take those tests. And then we also offer college placement tests. Sometimes when a student enrolls in a college, uh, and they're preparing for their first year, the college will want them to take a placement test maybe in English or math so that they know what courses to take as a freshman. Another aspect that the guidance office offers for students is that we present many lessons to each grade level, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. We meet with the students in small groups during their study halls and we present on a variety of topics um, from character building to financial literacy to activities resumes, um, to planning for life after high school. We also bring in a lot of guest speakers during this time to kind of help bridge the gap between what's going on here and what's going on outside in the, the work world. Uh, we also take students to a post-secondary ed night, like a college fair, a career fair, so we try to incorporate a lot of different aspects to meet every student's need. Another topic that might be informational for you is the whole post-secondary planning process that students go through. We can be very helpful during that process. Students can meet with us individually. Um, we also try to meet with students through our mini lessons as discussed by Mrs. Benjamin earlier. Um, the information that is given through mini lessons is kind of a brief introduction. If you are struggling with what you want to do, where you want to go after high school, set up an appointment to meet with us and we can give you some resources to help you figure that out. We encourage students to start looking at schools in their 10th grade year, maybe during the summer between 10th and 11th grade, go visit some schools so that they have an idea of what they're looking for and the type of school that they want to attend. Uh, we recommend students apply as early as they can in the fall of their senior year for any type of post-secondary training. And part of that process is coming to our office and requesting transcripts. When you request a transcript for that process, what we can do is put the transcript with any other paper 
uh, items that you have to go with that, whether it be a letter of recommendation from a teacher here or an essay, we will put those all together in one packet and send them to the institution of your choice. Uh, the other thing with transcripts is that the transcript includes all of your courses from the high school. So even as a freshman coming in to our building, make sure that you're spending the time on your courses and trying to keep your grades up as high as you can because colleges will look at that. And your grade point average, your class rank, all of that is cumulative. So that is included on your transcript senior year. So don't think that you can come in and just blow off your freshman year and it'll be okay. That will stay with you, so it's important that you know that coming into here. The other things included on a transcript are things uh, such as PSSA scores, Keystone scores, any type of SAT, ACT, um, and then extracurricular activities and awards that you have received. So just make sure that while you're here, you're giving it your best so that you have your best shot when you uh, get to be a senior and you're applying to the school of your choice. At times, high school students do like to get a job while they're going through school. Um, so in order to do that, anyone under the age of 18 needs working papers. Working papers can be obtained through the guidance office. Um, you have to be at least 14 years of age to receive working papers. It is a process that you have to go through. So if you come down that day and say you need your working papers, you're not going to get them that day, but you'll get them probably within a couple days. You have to bring in an original birth certificate, baptismal certificate, or passport. Um, a parent does have to sign the paper, and they either have to come in here and sign it, or it has to be taken to a notary and signed. They can't just sign it at home. So in order for you to be employed outside of school, say you want to get a job at Subway or McDonald's or Walmart, you are required to have those working papers. So come down to the guidance office, see us, we can help you get the process started. So once you've applied to a school and been accepted and decided what kind of post-secondary training you're going to receive, how are you going to pay for that? Uh, in our office, we have information about scholarships. Uh, there are scholarships that are available at every level, but honestly, mainly seniors are the ones that qualify for the scholarships that we get. We encourage students to come to our office, especially after Christmas break, seems to be what we call scholarship season. We get our most applications in during that period of time for students. We also post those scholarships online. You can access uh, the applications from there are the ones that are available in PDF format. And we also offer things regarding financial aid. We have financial aid nights during the year and we will help you try to figure this out and figure out you know, the best way to try and pay for this. We can put you in contact with people that can help you. But the main thing with scholarships is that you can't get that money if you don't apply. So make sure that you come down, see what's available to you, and try to get some extra money to help pay for school. library is that no food and drink allowed in the carpeted area of the library. It's prohibited. Would you like to renew this book? Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, it's been late and so there's going to be a fee attached to it. <laughs> Find out what your fine is. You owe 50 cents to the library. That means it's been late five days. Freshmen, welcome to St. Mary's Area High School. I'm Officer Lovett. Uh, my office is near the library on the on the uh, cafeteria side of the library. If you got any problems, questions, come see me. My office is open the majority of the time, unless I'm somewhere else. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about a couple of different things. Uh, one of which is the uh, parking lot in on the campus in our traffic ways. First of all, our traffic ways are named for emergency purposes and for public in, uh, convenience. You'll find a map of those uh, 
traffic ways on the bulletin board across from my office. The traffic ways, and one of the biggest problems are traffic ways, is the bus lane. In the mornings and the evenings when there's student drop-off or student pickup, particularly in the mornings we find that people do not understand what a bus lane is. A bus lane is for buses only, not for cars. Uh, we find that uh, some parents that aren't used to dropping their kids off try to drop their kid off in front of the school right in the bus lane. Bus lanes are from 7.10 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. in the mornings and uh, at nighttime it's I believe 3 o'clock to 3.45. In any event our biggest problem is in the morning so when you need to drop your kid off please when you come in from the middle school take the left go down through the second traffic way in front of the school and drop your student off there. That way you're not in violation of state and school law. Um, as far as the parking lot designation, we did that for also for public convenience. Um, you'll see where the parking lots are de designated one, two, three, and four starting from the school. That's one, that would be the lowest parking lot. That would be the teacher's lot. That's where the teachers park. Uh, number two down would be the senior lot, which obviously is where our seniors park, and then the junior lot and sophomore lot. Uh, if you are any of the above, please park in the designated parking lot, otherwise you'll have problems with the upperclassmen. We don't want that. Um, let's talk about school safety now and weapons. Obviously this is pretty simple. No weapons. No knives, no guns, no brass knuckles, no bombs, or anything that's similar to that. If you got any questions on that, please see the school's principal or myself. Drug policies, that's another simple one. Um, no drugs. No illegal drugs, no paraphernalia, um, and you know what those are by now. You're a freshman, you've gone through DARE programs and uh, drug abuse educational programs, uh, and you're going to go through more when you're up here at the high school, some of which that uh, I'll put on and, and some of the other agencies will be coming in to put on for you. Um, as far, one of the misunderstood, I think, policies that we do have, and I don't think it's widespread misunderstanding, but some some people don't understand that when you bring medication to, to school such as uh, prescriptions from a doctor or you bring in something because you have a headache that morning that those items need to be reported to the school principal or the school nurse but make sure that's done do not bring any tablets pills or prescriptions in any container other than the ones that they're designated for for instance prescription bottles if you bring the medication to school you bring it in a bottle it goes to the nurse um, that leads to the last and final subject I'd like to talk to you about, and that would be school attendance. Um, the school, uh, the district, St. Mary's Area School District follows the state attendance laws. And that meaning that uh, if you get three illegal absences, letters will be sent to your house, certified mail, and that your parents will be charged with truancy, which is a fine up to $300 if you fail. Uh, to turn in excuses when you're absent. That's, that we have very few incidents of that, but when we do, uh, we obviously take action on that because our mission is for your education and we'd like you to be here. Um, if you are um, 16 years of age and under, um, if you have irregular absentees or you're late for school well, quite a bit, um, that case could be turned over to Children and Youth Services and they would investigate, go visit your, visit you at your house and etc. You don't want to get into that situation. Uh, other penalties uh, against students could be a 90-day suspension of license. For instance, if you're 17 years old or etc. and then you're absent from school, um, you could be facing a 90-day suspension of driver's license. Um, with that, like I said before, I think that you're going to find your experience at St. Mary's Area High School different from the middle school. There's a lot more freedoms. There's a lot more fun. Uh, the best advice I can give you is follow the rules. Don't make it any harder than you can. You're here for an education. Have a great time, and we'll see you in September. Phones. In here, yes, you are allowed right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, no cell phones in the bathroom! 
I'm sorry. You can't be on your phone in the guy's office. See the red zone? Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, are you using your cell phone? <gasps> yeah. This is a red zone. You're not allowed to use your phone in the red zone. Thank you. Participate in Spirit Week and treat the seniors with respect. Make sure you be on time for class because there's no leniency in the high school. Don't be afraid to do you. Find yourself with people who will better you. Get involved and don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. The advice I give to all the freshmen, always follow the dress code. Don't be too cool for school and always be nice to your teachers. Keep your lockers clean and always do your homework. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. You know, when you go to become a freshman, don't be afraid to read. Reading's good for everybody. When you get your schedule, it will look something like this. Unfortunately, some of it is out of order. So just read it numerically. You'll go to first period, and then you'll go to second period and third. After third period, you go to AP. AP is pretty much your homeroom. You go there for 20 minutes just to do some extra work and you have a teacher designated if you need anyone to talk to. Then you'll go to fourth period. This is where things get tricky. We go to lunches and lunches are split up into like half periods. So this person has B lunch. So they're gonna go to five, six, then period seven, which is their lunch, and then eight, nine. If you have A lunch, you'll be put in period five for lunch, and if you have C lunch, you'll be put in period nine. After lunch schedule, you'll go to 10 and 11. <laughs> 